How you doing? Friday, Friday, Friday. Hope you got a good weekend lined up. This is Craig Beck uh, from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Welcome into your Friday meeting. Here we are again all together uh, to remind uh, each other why we've chosen this path, why we're on this road to sobriety. And it doesn't matter where you are on that journey, if you're just starting out, even if you're just considering getting started, you're very welcome here and you are amongst friends. If you want to uh, find new sober friends or supporters, then the Telegram group is a very good place to do that. There are hundreds of people in there chatting on a daily basis now, which is good to see. Um, so today, I'm so excited because I've got so much to share with you. Uh, I've got an amazing email uh, from someone who's been sober, I think, for about three years now. Uh, he did my course, and it completely changed his life. And he's got some words of wisdom for you, some advice uh, on what to expect and what works and what doesn't work. So I want to share that with you. Uh, I also want to uh, tell you about some very special guests that I've got lined up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, some real experts in their field. All of them, I think, will be uh, a great help to everyone. First of all, uh, Andrew Bridgewater is coming back. Andrew is an expert in mental health, in depression and anxiety. Uh, he has quit drinking himself. Uh, he knows all about the triggers of anxiety to drink and things like that. So if depression, anxiety, low mood, panic attacks or anything like that uh, are your problem and you're using alcohol to help with them at the moment, then Andrew is your man. He will be on this live feed within the next 10 days. All right. He knows his stuff. Now, also coming up as a guest on Monday, Monday, the next week, we have a stop smoking expert. In fact, one of the best smoking cessation coaches in the world. This guy knows his stuff. For 18 years, he has been helping people to quit smoking. Now, I know people come here for alcohol reasons, but I know that the two things go together. A lot of people say that they drink when they smoke and they smoke when they drink and vice versa. And equally, both of those two things can be triggers for the other. Some people who've quit smoking have an alcoholic drink and start smoking again or vice versa. And so if you've got any questions about quitting smoking or the connection between smoking and alcohol, Mark is going to be able to help you get your questions ready. Or he will be on this live street, uh, stream on Monday coming up, okay? So that will be very good as well. And finally, next week, I'm thinking Friday next week, we will have uh, a lady called Sharon Gregory uh, on the show. She is the host of a podcast called Over the Influence. And um, here is Sharon. Uh, Forgive me. Gregory was her maiden name. Sharon, that was what she was called when I used to work with her 20 years ago. Sharon Hartley, she's called now. She is a BBC broadcaster from Lancashire in England. Um, she's been in that loop of the, you know, the nightly bottle of wine, and she broke free of it. And now she dedicates a lot of her time to helping other people to quit drinking. And she runs this podcast. Uh, She's great to talk to, hopefully going to have her on this show on Friday to give us some pointers. Uh, and I really wanted to get her on now because there are lots of stories coming out that this pandemic has created countries full of problem drinkers, but it is skewed heavily towards women. Women have fared much worse from this pandemic than the men for some reason. So that's all very exciting. Uh, that's all coming up in the next week, 10 days. Let's say hello to a few people. Um, Leslie Johnson uh, says, hi, sister. Okay. Uh, Davey's here. Good morning, uh, Davey. Uh, Angela in Australia. Welcome, Angela. Kelly is here in, uh, is that New Jersey, Kelly? Um, oh, I guess she was saying hello to KB, not me. Okay. Leslie was saying hi, sister, but it was, it was aimed at somebody else in the chat. Okay. Uh, Velcro is here. Wow. Three. Look at that. Th three years as a non-drinker. Thanks to Craig. Three years. Wow. Uh, Bourneville in Birmingham. Love that chocolate. Uh, Mick the legend is here as well. Uh, just listening, whole working today. Uh, great to hear what you guests get. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. Welcome, Mick. Uh, Caesar is here. We have uh, Slavi on board. 
Uh, Vaughn is here as well. Christine and Nikki, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button below, ring the bell so you get a notification when we go live and say hello in the comments. Tell me why you're here. I want to know where you are on this journey. Are you just thinking about quitting drinking? Are you in the process or are you long-term sober? And if you are, tell us how long you've been sober for. We'll give you a big round of applause. Uh, and give you the praise that you so rightly deserve. Okay, so I'm coming on to this email that I want to share with you that's brutally honest. Pulls no punches, but it's fantastic. Uh, but first of all, uh, I want to tell you about um, something else that I've done. And this is something that people have been asking me to do for years, and I've never done it, not because I, I couldn't be bothered, but people have been saying to me for years, are there any, is there any merchandise? Is there any, are there any t-shirts I can wear? And I've always thought, no, why would you want to do that? Why would, uh, to me, this stop drinking thing has always been like a private thing um, for most people, not for me, obviously. I, you know, I shout my mouth off all over the place. But for a lot of people, quitting drinking is a very private thing. Why would you want to go walk around wearing a t-shirt that says you've quit drinking? And, and over the last few months, I've been thinking, well, you know what, quite rightly, a lot of people are very proud of what they've achieved. They're very proud of their sobriety and they don't care uh, about their past. They only care about the present and it, it's a good way of endorsing how they feel. So your wish is my command. And we finally added some merchandise to the website. If you, uh, if you go to stopdrinkingexpert.com, you click on merch here at the top. It will take you through to a selection of goodies that you can uh, buy to your heart's content. Uh, I'm not going to spend too long on this. They're there if you want them. Uh, I know for most people, they'd rather be seen dead. But um, for some people who've been asking for it, it's here finally. I'll show you the ones that I like. Uh, I like this one. Beware, attractively packaged poison. I like that because it's subtle. You know, at first glance, you could be thinking, well, they're obviously a troublemaker. You're the attractively packaged poison. But us in the know know what this refers to. So I kind of like that one. Uh, there's the keep calm, stay sober, recovery mode, uh, hoodies and sweatshirts and things. Oh, I like this. I like this. Sobriety established 2022, if that's when you quit drinking. There's one there for 2021 as well. Um, and if you don't want to walk around being branded, uh, there's more subtle things you can do as well. There's some mugs here. Um, sober AF mugs. Of course, we know that sober AF stands for sober alcohol free. But it can also mean something a bit more cheeky if, if that's uh, how your dirty mind works. So there you go. Uh, merchandise is available uh, should you so wish. It is there on the website. You can look at that later. Um, hi, Alex. So there's a Julie. Uh, hey, hey, Julie. One month sober. Can't stop eating. Okay, let's talk about that later. Uh, Jachufin, is that right? Three years sober. Uh, Tracy's here. Good morning. Love the T-shirts. Um, <laughs> Nickelodeon 81, imagine we're walking into a pub wearing all that. You know what, you say that, but wouldn't that be the ultimate expression of confidence if you walked into a bar wearing a sober AF t-shirt? It would be like, yeah, I'm sober, what about it? It, it's, it would be kind of cool, I think, don't you? Um, right, okay, let's get to this email. Um, let me just remind you, it's, uh, this is an Ask Me Anything, so if you have any questions, Post them up in the comments below wherever you're watching, whether that's on YouTube or Twitch, and we'll get to them uh, at the back end of today's meeting. Uh, I just wanted to share this um, email with you first. Um, so this is uh, from a former drinker. Let's call him P. Uh, and he writes, I'm just going to read it to you because I think I, I don't need to paraphrase this or summarize it. I think it's, it's such a good story, um, and we can all empathize with it so well. I'm just going to read it to you. Uh, so he says, uh, I thought I would update you on how I'm getting on. I can't be sure of the time scales, but I think I started with Craig's program about three years ago. Since then, I've been mostly sober, but more importantly, happy. I had a couple of relapses in that time when the evil clown got me back for a short spell. But overall, long time sober. 40 years old, happily married with a seven-year-old daughter and a son who's going to be two in a week. I own a small business with a few staff and all the headaches and stress that come with that. I believe for, the, for, the, for this to work, 
And for you to be truly happy sober, you need to focus on the benefits of being free from alcohol and not the misery alcohol caused you. The memory of the misery will eventually wear off, but living a happy, poison-free life uh, is always in the present and hard to forget. So here are some of the great things about living a life free of alcohol. The first and best thing that happens is you feel at peace. All the internal battles and arguments with yourself about, should I drink tonight? Or, I don't want to drink. I do want to drink. I'll only drink tonight, but not tomorrow. I'll stop drinking on Monday. And so on and so on. I'm sure you can relate to this. But all of this stops as soon as you stop drinking and you know in your heart that you've finished. And all this turmoil ends and a wave of peace comes over you. And it is indeed fantastic. I've said this many times, but it's worth repeating as it's a massive benefit of not poisoning yourself. Mountains become molehills. Yeah, you read that right. All those stressful things in your life when you're not drinking just get smaller. When you're not dealing with hangovers all the time and generally feeling jaded, you just roll your sleeves up and you get on with sorting things out, be it at work, at home, in your relationship. You get the time you need to sort your stuff out. You have, far, you have far more time on your hands. Sometimes it can be tough to deal with. If you're anything like I was, I would drink as much as I could early evening, then fall into a coma, sometimes before my kids went to bed. Boredom can become an issue, but remember life is short as it is. My weekends last much longer, and who am I to complain? That's also why on a Friday night I'm wide awake typing this. I'm a better husband and dad. My family now comes first and not my addiction. I would like to think I'm a better boss at work and in general. I just think this journey has made me into a much better person and far less selfish, unlike when I was drinking. I can look into a mirror and not hate myself now. Some of the stuff is obvious, so I will not dwell on it. Weight loss, more energy, more money. I've been on around eight alcohol-free holidays, and they have been the best. Another thing I'd forgotten about a bit, and I was reminded of recently, when I noticed how much some of our close friends do it, is how much planning goes into getting a drink. Every waking minute seems to be about structuring your day or weekend and where you can fit alcohol into it. It isn't about having fun or doing something enjoyable. Every activity is about getting a drink in. The freedom you enjoy when you start doing things you truly enjoy is fantastic. Even being able to drive anywhere you like at any time of day or night is liberating. Be prepared, though, to become the local taxi driver and the designated, take designated takeaway pickup person. And the irony of being the only person capable of driving to the shop to buy more booze because your mates have run out. I am comfortable around booze now. I can go to the bar and bring back a round of drinks without feeling any desire to drink them, just like I can buy bleach from the shop without wanting to drink that. I socialize more now than I did before. I tended to be a stay-at-home drinker, usually on my own. Now, all that I have written may sound like I'm showing off or being smug, but that is not my intention. Craig and the Stop Drinking Expert program have saved my life, and I am forever grateful. I write this to try and give back and help people with a positive message. Before I found this program and Craig's books, I thought I was unique and broken. I thought my life wasn't worth living if alcohol was taken away. I was wrong. Maybe you're in this position now, and I hope my words help and you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Life isn't perfect. I still have shit days. I still have stress. I still have the occasional wobble. And I would be lying to you if I said that the evil clown didn't whisper in my ear from time to time about how good just having that one drink would be. The trick to this is to know what's happening and you know how to deal with it. Now and again, I think about how good it would be to get drunk one night at a barbecue or a beer garden, but it's just not worth it. My overall happiness is now far more critical I prefer being happy all the time rather than just being happy for a few drunken hours that I fail to remember the day after. Alcohol is like one of these mega high interest payday loan companies, a quick instant fix, but boy, are you going to regret it and pay for it later. One of the things I love is the attention I get. People are genuinely in awe of the fact that I can go out and have fun without a drink. It starts many a conversation, and if I'm honest, I get a bit of a buzz out of it. I tell people the truth. My life is better without alcohol in it. 
I hope you managed to read it this far and I hope you've either found it helpful or interesting. It helps me every couple of months to write something like this to remind me how far I've come and how much my life has improved. Love to you all. Conclusion, problems with alcohol never get better on their own. How good's that? How good is that email, huh? Doesn't that just touch on so many things that we've all been through? You know that, um, I love what, the way he talks about that internal argument you have every night where you say to yourself, I'm not drinking tonight, I'm not drinking tonight, but I want to drink tonight. Well, okay, I'll drink tonight, but I won't drink tomorrow night. And I'm only going to drink wine, not spirits, or I'm only going to drink beer, not wine. And this constant running dialogue in your head of you trying to justify the unjustifiable to yourself. Isn't it exhausting? That night after night, you're having the same argument with yourself. Isn't that crazy? So I just love that email. And if you ever want to share your story like that, please email me, craig at craigbeck.com. I'm very happy to hear from you. Uh, all right. Q&As. Let's fire them up. What are you worried about? What's good? What's bad? What's concerning you? What are you questioning at the moment? Let's have a look and see what we got coming up. Um, let's say hello to Slavi, a regular on the show. Morning to Craig, sending much love to everyone. Happy sober life is the best gift you can give yourself. You are too right. Kelly, six months alcohol free. Now I need sugar addiction. Somebody else said that. Was it Julia? I think Julia said that as well, I think. I've lost you, Julia. I'm 90% sure it was you. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, because you're used to, you know, like I said in the last video, alcohol is a fuel. It burns. That's how you know it's a fuel. It has energy within it. And when it's in your bloodstream, you basically have liquid fuel in your body. And your body has got used to having liquid fuel in the blood. And so it's been super easy for your body to get access to energy. It's just there. It doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't have to process it. It doesn't have to convert it from something to something else like fat into glycogen or anything like that. It just takes it straight out of your bloodstream, burns it, and there you go. Now, of course, the bad bit of that is that the fat that you have stored in your body and the three-course meal you just ate just get dumped. They're not needed because you have enough energy in your blood anyway to sustain your body. So when you stop drinking, um, I mean... Me too. I, I was eating Haribo by the bag, you know. I, I was devouring sugar, and I've got quite a savory uh, palate. You know, I don't really like sweet things. I like savory things. But when I stopped drinking, I just wanted sugar like crazy. And it's because your body is just, um, it's become accustomed to having this fuel always there. The only thing I can say to you is that over time it will fade, uh, and you won't be craving sugar anymore. It doesn't mean you won't put weight on. I mean, <laughs> lockdown has not been good to me. I can tell you, <laughs> sitting on my backside watching Netflix has not worked out too well for me. But the sugar craving should go if you can just give it enough time. Um, and it's not much help to you at the moment, uh, only to reassure you that it's temporary. Um, let's have a look what we got here. Christine, uh, day 11. I remember Sharon Hartley when she gave up drinking. Are you from uh, Lancashire, Christine? You, did you hear her talking about that or have you listened to the podcast? She's good fun, Sharon. I'm really looking forward to speaking to her. We used to work together 20, 20 years ago, something like that. That's scary, isn't it? Um, let's have a look. Uh, Dr. Danger's in the house. First time here. Four beers in two weeks, almost there. Good. Tapering down, huh? Doesn't work for everyone, but if that's what's working for you, fantastic. And keep going. Keep going. And keep what, you know, keep turning up at meetings like this because what you, you'll find is you just get a recurring message that goes in quite deep that alcohol is poison and you don't want it in your body. And slowly, slowly over time, you start looking at it in that way. It becomes attractively packaged poison and not, oh, cold glass of beer. You look at it in a different way if you keep feeding your brain with the right stuff. O'Neill is in, four days sober. Congratulations, O'Neill. Uh, keep going. Have a good weekend. Keep yourself busy this weekend. Huh? Make sure every moment of your weekend is planned out. That's how you plan for a sober weekend. Mateus is here. Welcome back in, Mateus. Good to have you. 
a rhubarb late outrageous go to the back of the class um <laughs> philip's on board he's listening but pretending to work Shh, nobody tell his boss nikki two years sober and one month absolutely fantastic what's your secret nikki what's kept you on the sober path share that with us in the comments please um Feeling sad, Tracy says, my friends don't invite me anywhere unless they need a DD, a designated driver, I'm guessing. Are you sure they are your friends? Um, yeah, I, you know, look, it's not you. It's not that they don't like you. It's just that you are an uncomfortable reminder to their subconscious mind that they are routinely drinking poison and pretending that it's making their life better. It's they don't want to hear this message consciously or unconsciously. It, it's it, it, because if they hear it and they consciously absorb it, then they have to make a decision, aren't they? They're going to have to take that information. They're going to have to say, yeah, I understand. I'm drinking poison and it wants to kill me and I'm going to carry on doing that. Thank you very much. Or they're going to have to stop drinking. And they don't want to deal with either of these situations. So try not to take it personally. Understand where it's coming from. Um, but you don't need to take a back seat. You be the instigator. Instigate stuff that doesn't revolve around drinking. You know, it, maybe you could play sports with one of them, or maybe you can have coffee with the guy, the, 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 your friends rather. You know, try and do things that aren't all built around drinking alcohol. Become the leader. If they're, uh, you know, if they're pushing you to the back like that. Rumba, 14 months. Nice. Very good. Very good. Damien, three years sober. Superstar. Amazing. Uh, Mr. Bowser from Idaho, 28 days. Chalking them up. Excellent. Uh, JR, thank you very much. Super sticker. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Um Slavi says, uh, 14 months, uh, free from the attractively packaged poison. It's like a breath of fresh air. It certainly is. Um, Onel, four, uh, okay, Onel, four days uh, scared because the weekend is coming. That's what I mean. The weekend is this vast amount of space for a lot of people. And there's a lot of opportunity in there for the clown. You know, the clowns on a Friday afternoon, he's like this going, oh, yeah, you've been strong, but here comes Saturday. Because he knows there's so many opportunities, you know, to get you out with the boys. You're bored, you're lonely, you're frustrated, you're this, you're that. So you have to, in this early stage of sobriety, certainly for the first month, you need to do a lot of planning. Um, you need to make sure that your weekend is so rammed out that you haven't got an opportunity to be bored and to listen to the clown. Yeah. And that means that you have to commit to stuff. You have to put things in your diary that you can't get out of. So you ring around on a Friday, you speak to your folks, you say, hey, I'm coming to see you, I'm coming to visit on Saturday. And they'll say, why? Yeah, I just want to see you. Ring up an old friend you've not seen, arrange a coffee. Someone, who, not an old friend you used to drink with, an old friend you haven't seen in a while. Arrange to go to the cinema or some the movies with someone and make sure that it's just, you know, Coca-Cola you're having there. Spend time with the kids. Find something that the kids want to do that's so inanely boring for you but there's no opportunity to drink you know take them to the soft play center that is hell on earth but you know they don't serve alcohol there and so on and so on and so on ram out your weekend so it goes back it flies past and you don't have time that's the best advice i can give you for a dodging the bullet on a weekend i knew you said that julie one month sober can't stop eating it's that fuel thing just temporary it'll go promise you um Three years sober, just now in Tenerife. First vacation abroad in years. I used to have other more important things to use my money on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true, isn't it? You know, it's crazy. Um, when I was at the peak of my drinking, I, was, I, I had this stupid idea in my head that I was a wine connoisseur, that I wasn't an alcoholic. I wasn't a problem drinker. I was an expert in wine. I mean, I was, you know, what a what a dickhead I was. I, I, I had a wine rack with some of the bottles of wine in my wine rack were $400 a bottle. 
Chateau Lynchbarge, you know, French Bordeaux, and it just I would have a little diary with tasting notes in, you know, with the color and the aroma and the what a dick. Um, but here I was spending, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds a year on on alcohol. And yet I was telling my wife that she couldn't replace the family car because we didn't have any money and telling the kids we couldn't go on vacation this year because, you know, money was a bit tight. What a ridiculous situation. Um, thank you, Tracy. Uh, Tracy says, good morning. Love the T-shirts. Thank you. Um, let's have a look. Um, the Urban Loner. We all love you, man. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet of you. Thank you. That's why we're doing these meetings, you know. I, I put off doing these for quite a long time because I thought, well, you know, does, does it serve any purpose? Do people get any value out of this? Um, and it was only recently when I, I looked at the AA website and obviously the pandemic has changed things. And, and if you go to the AA uh, London website, they're doing like five or six meetings a day online. Um so there must be value in it. So that's why I'm doing it, basically. Uh, let's have a look. What else we got here? Uh, Tracy says, I just started reading your book because I know I have a problem. Thank you for being a beak of help of knowledge. You've taken the first step, Tracy. And that's something more than most people will do. There's some scary stat out there that it's something like 80% of the people who buy a self-help book never even open it. It's not that they don't finish reading it. They never even open the book. It's like that was enough. You know, they recognize they've got a problem. So they did something, but just enough to quiet down the, that little you know, demon on their shoulder. So the fact that you're reading the book and you're here at a live stream is, you know, it's a, it's a positive indication. Keep doing stuff one day at a time. Each day, move closer to sobriety. NV, acute cravings are the major issue for me. Solution, please. Um, Okay, there are different cravings, right? You know, I talk about this in the course. Uh, and if you haven't done the course, MV, that might be helpful to you if you go to stopdrinkingexpert.com. But basically, there are two phases of um, coming out of this addiction. The first is the physical kick. So for about 14, 15 days, uh, alcohol is going to kick you. And by that, I mean alcohol uses carrot and stick to motivate you and manipulate you into drinking. And the way it does that is it's a very simple mechanism. It makes you feel a sensation that we would describe as being mild anxiety. OK, so you feel a bit jittery. You get home from work and you vocalize this as oh, I could do with a drink. What a day. You feel just tense and uptight. But you also know from conditioning, from repeated conditioning, that you have a solution to this uh, tense feeling, and it is alcohol. So alcohol makes you feel bad and then rewards you for compliance. And this is the carrot and stick, the loop, yeah? Alcohol, the drug itself, has the power to do this to you through physical sensations for about 14, 15, 16 days, something like that. Once you get more than a couple of weeks sober, if you get a craving to drink, it is purely and simply a psychological trigger. It's got nothing to do with the alcohol. It could be anything. If you spent enough time with me, NV, I could condition you to be addicted to being punched on the arm. That's just the way the human mind works. If I waited, if I did this every day, several times a day, and I waited until moments in the day when you were really happy or laughing or smiling and punched you on the arm, if I did that for long enough, and I'm talking probably for months, punching you on the arm every time you feel happy, one day when I stopped doing it, you would you would have a withdrawal sensation. You would feel anxious. You would feel uncomfortable in your skin. And you probably wouldn't know why, because it's not logical for you to crave a punch on the arm. But you would just think, oh, my God, I, oh, I don't feel well at all. That's how susceptible the human brain is. So look, I'm gonna give I'm gonna tell you what to do, right? I'm assuming you're more than 14 days away from drinking. Envy, if you get a craving, I want you to do this thing first. First thing, I want you to drink a full pint of cold water. Don't skip this step thinking, ah, I'm not thirsty, it doesn't matter. 
often because we're so used to drinking alcohol at the first sensation of a craving, we mix up the craving for thirst and alcohol. So the first thing I want you to do is drink a pint of cold water. Do not skip it. It's more important than it sounds. Not only is it dealing with that misinterpretation of the craving, but also it is a pattern interrupt. Normally, when you get a craving to drink alcohol, what do you do? You drink alcohol. You don't pour a massive glass of water, do you? So it's a pattern interrupt. It's already interfering with the psychological anchor that's in your head, all right? So that's the first thing. The second thing I want you to do is another pattern interrupt. I want you to do something so dramatically different than what you would normally do that you can't even connect the two. I want it to be dramatic and crazy, all right? So you've got to... If you get if you you come home, you get a craving to drink, get straight back out that door, run around the block, run around the 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 village or wherever you live. Do star jumps for 30 seconds, sing happy birthday to yourself five times, bring your parents, I don't know, do some coloring in with the kids, do some zumba. I don't care what it is, it has to be dramatically different than what you would normally do. Why? Because it's like at the moment you've got this record in your head with the grooves in it and the needle goes around the grooves doing pattern interrupts is like taking that record that lp and a nail and scratching it across the surface of the lp eventually after you've done that enough times the record won't play anymore that's the objective here okay if they don't work i want you to google or look on my youtube channel for tapping therapy um tft okay because that will be the next thing you're going to do I won't go into it here. That's for another video. But uh, let me know how you get on with that, okay? Todd, yesterday you mentioned that most NA uh, non-alcohol beers don't taste good. I agree. Uh, but I've just discovered one that actually tastes better than most real beer. Really? Samuel Adams, Just the Haze IPA. It's amazing. Now I'm really jealous because I live in Cyprus and the chance of me getting that is pretty much zero. But thanks for the heads up. Um, Paul, two years sober, thanks to your book. No desire to drink at all. And I own a pub and I'm around alcohol all day. The illusion is dead to me. Wow, that's such an endorsement. Really good. Um, Kelly's recommending another alcohol-free beer here. Athletic brand AF beer. Uh, Bourneville from Birmingham. I feel a strong hatred for alcohol now I'm sober, but I can't help voicing this when friends bring up drinking. Is it best to keep quiet or should I voice my opinion? I do feel it's justified. Uh, they don't want to hear it, though. That's the problem. Um, I think you should own. Look, if you want to keep your friends, you should only voice your opinion if they ask for it. I know it's hard. And there was a guy from Australia a couple of years ago. He emailed me and said, Craig, I can't believe this. I can't believe how amazing life is. Can you tell me how do I teach this to other people? I want to teach, I want to show all my friends. I said, Don't. You're going to lose all your friends. Oh, the only time you should really talk about this is when someone comes up to you and says, Hey, look, I noticed you stopped drinking. It's really impressive. How did you do it? then you can sit them down. You can give them it lock, stock, and barrel. But you're just going to irritate your friends. Think about how annoying a reformed smoker is when someone who you know, you know has been smoking 40 a day and now is preaching about how, how dirty and disgusting it is and how revolting a habit is. It's, yeah, people don't want to hear it. Just, you know, keep it inside. Keep and have that little smug feeling inside like, you know, and be there for your friends when they need you. When they come to you and say, this is destroying my life, help me. Then you can jump in and be the hero. Um, Kelly says, driving at night on vacation, feeling safe. Great benefit. Uh, I'm so grateful too. The hypnosis did it for me. I was sort of alcohol-free since January 2020, but I was slipping about every two months. Completely AF, six months with no craving at all. Incredible. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Johnny Cola says, I often get asked if I miss having a drink. The answer is no, not even a bit. Um, 
Tracy, I took your advice and started to make videos of myself while uh, I'm drinking yesterday. And, oh, we want to see the, uh, the next one, don't we? Holy cow, do I look stupid. <laughs> That's what alcohol does. It makes you stupid. That's why everything's so much fun when you're at, when you're drunk. Why jokes are so funny because you're stupid. You know, you you're basically a chimpanzee. You you find the most basic of things amusing when you're drunk because you haven't got the mental capacity to see much beyond the the basic. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Nikki says, "I real uh, this is Nikki's secret. You remember earlier on, Nikki was saying, was it three years you're sober, Nikki? I said, what's your secret? Um, he or she, I'm not sure, uh, realized, uh, I realized I could never have enough alcohol and that was enough to stop. It's true. Uh, if, you've, you know, if you've been drinking a while, you probably started out hearing stories about people who were drinking a bottle of vodka a day. And to you back then, that seemed ridiculous. You were like, how could you do that? And and you say to yourself, well, I, I would never get that bad. You know, I, I drink a bottle of wine a day, but I would never drink a bottle of vodka a day. And then 10 years later, you're finding that a bottle of wine doesn't even touch the sides. It's like it's like water to you. You didn't feel anything. And so you, you start drinking the harder stuff. And before long, you're thinking, shit, I'm drinking half a bottle of vodka a day. What's the next step for me? Well, guess what? You carry on like that another five years and half a bottle of vodka will be like water to you. You'll drink half a bottle of vodka and go, I don't feel anything. So now you're going to have to drink a whole bottle of vodka. Welcome to the spiral, my friend. Um, Starchild, I'm still in the loop. I know I will get there someday. Keep coming to these meetings, Starchild. Keep just keep focusing on the exit. Yeah. Don't ever just give up and say, well, that's a part of my life. Keep, you know, it will sink in for you. The penny will drop. One day you'll just think, I've had enough. I've had enough of this. And you will have more determination than you've ever had before. Dr. Danger, whiskey was a part of my character on stage, and I successfully incorporated it into every aspect aspect of my life. Not a fall down drinker, just a really good drinker. I was afraid I would lose myself without. Yeah, just another illusion, isn't it? Um, let's have a look. Um, <laughs> Gem. Uh, greetings from the A1 Stamford on a break in my truck. Uh, is, is it your piano? It's an illusion, Gem. It's not real. This is, this is just a, <laughs> I shouldn't shatter the illusion, should I? It's not much of a theater thing to do. No, it's not my piano. My wife is learning piano, but uh, it's not a grand. Um, Kelly, how long should I continue all the supplements? Uh, as long as you find them helpful is, is the short answer. Um, if you're completely solid now, uh, Kelly, if you're thinking, well, that's it. I'm really solid being sober, I'm not tempted, I feel pretty safe and secure, then start removing them one at a time. So if you're taking, uh, I don't know, if you're taking uh, like B vitamins, magnesium, 5-HTP, uh, some omega-3, something like that, then one week, take out one of them that you don't think you need anymore, and then see how you feel for a week. And if you still feel strong and good, you can take out another one. Uh, some you might just want to leave in long term because you believe in the benefits like omega-3, I think, is a long term bet. Uh, turmeric, curcumin, I think, is a long term bet. Um, garlic, garlic tablets are probably a good one to keep in there. But just you know, slowly phase them out and see how you feel. And if you, you, know, if you take one out and you feel a bit jittery, put it back in again. Um, let's have a look here. I've got a feeling I'm missing a lot of people, but I'll do my best. Good advice, JR. The time to stop drinking poison is now. This can't wait. Um, so look, uh, Think Floyd. Greetings from Western Australia. 13 days sober after a 10-week daily binge. Went 10 months so sober prior to that. Appreciate the support from your channel. Glad you're back with us, uh, Think Floyd. 
you're on the right road now keep going uh that's a good one i spend my dollars on massages now how good is that to go from spending on an attractively packaged poison the poison to basically having a bit of a pamper session every now and again that's good um jake any advice if you've piled on the pounds after quitting drinking i've put on three stone feel like i've filled the void left by excessive eating thanks for all you do uh this is hard to say because i'm in the same boat you know i was um locked down as i said lockdown has been really bad for me because as you know i used to do quit drinking boot camp i used to travel around the world that was my thing once a month i'd be in a different country and then lockdown happened and i was i live in a village in cyprus population 2000 and lockdown was really severe here and you couldn't leave the house at all without express permission from the government you had to text the government and get permission to leave the house even to go to the supermarket so it was just sitting there doing nothing for two years practically netflix and eating look i'm going to say something to you that may be true about you i'm pretty sure it's true about me and i think it may be true about a lot of people you got addicted to alcohol for a reason because there's something underneath that was causing you pain there's something there that makes you miserable and makes you question the point of life and all that sort of stuff there's something that's not quite right and if you've got a powerful brain in your head and you're a bit of an introvert these thoughts go round and round and round and you just want them to shut up sometimes you just want to stop worrying you just want to stop thinking about it and along comes alcohol and appears to offer a solution of course it's a terrible solution and then you stop drinking and you feel better but then you start doing something else to excess eating exercising gambling you know it's because that at the heart of it all we're still addicts you know i'm still an addict uh, but just because i stopped drinking doesn't mean that everything's miraculous and i'm now a perfect person i know i'm still an addict i know i still have negative behavior traits i know that when i'm bored I'll probably eat something if I if I'm alone in the house. And that's always been the case. It's not like it's something new. It's just that I got married again recently and when my wife moved in with me when we moved in together she said, "Why have you got any food in the house? Why are all the cupboards empty?" And I said, "Because I know myself very well." And now that we're I'm married again and, and we live together, every single cupboard in the house is full of food. So I know that about myself. I'm you know I'm terrible with money I'm terrible with food I'm an addict I'm just I've got this poison out of my life and that's made everything better so Jake um start asking yourself some difficult questions about what's underneath your drinking what do you need to deal with and bite the bullet get some therapy and get on with it always got time to say hello someone here for the first time uh Encrons for fun. Sling your journey is a good place to start. Uh, just bought the book. Thank you. Uh, Anita, uh, Anata, 28 days sober today and happy. Uh, can you give me some advice not to get relapsed in the future? Yes. But don't assume that you're fixed. Don't assume that job done. This kind of ha has to be sobriety has to be something you're passionate about and you know these meetings help me as much as they help you because we're all together we're all here reaffirming our commitment to what we want and that is a sober life and just by turning up at these things at these online sessions we are just we are stronger together i believe and we gain we all gain strength from the fact that we're all here making this commitment together so don't let this just, you know, don't let your drinking problem fade into the past as something you used to deal with that's no longer a problem because it will come back and bite you because you will think that you're invincible or you'll think, well, you know, it was so easy to quit before, I'll do it again. And you'll find it's not, in fact, it's much harder to stop for the second time. So just keep this, you know, keep it on the back burner. Don't take your sobriety for granted. It takes work. Um but no more, no more work than if you had some other condition like diabetes. You know, if you had diabetes, you wouldn't have a good day and then say, oh, well, I'll just eat a load of chocolate tomorrow because I feel good today. 
or you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't just stop looking at your food choices or things like that because, ah, well, the diagnosis was three months ago. You would just keep it in the, you know, the top of your head. I, this is how I'm going to live from now on. I hope that helps. Uh, and Kelly says, do the do the hypnosis. That helps as well. Um, Melissa, good to see you, Craig. I stopped back in July. I recently came down with COVID. And the first day felt like a terrible hangover. It made me realize how much I do not miss drinking. I know what you mean, Melissa. Um, I had I had some lower back problem. And they uh, the doctor gave me some tramadol. Uh, and when when you when that wears off, you, it feels like a really bad hangover. You just ugh, it's horrible. Um, the urban loner says tons of value to this these meetings. So helpful to have a community. I'm sure there are many here that feel the same way. Thank you very much. Um, Mick says yes, we do get value out of it. Uh, it's not something I would want every day. <laughs> just <laughs> just that's what my wife says. Just nice to know that uh, you care for those that you've helped and uh, hear people's stories. Okay, I'm, I'm, there's, oh, thank you very much for, I don't get a lot of these, but thank you. Heineken Zero is a suggestion from N Monster with a $5 super chat. Thank you very much. I, I see the crypto YouTubers get those all the time and I'm like, oh. but thank you. I appreciate it. How do I stop romanticizing red wine? It's it's not it's it's not red wine, is it? It's all all alcohol is romanticized by the marketing. Um, it's it's a good one because I know red wine, the hype around it being luxurious and elegant and a, an accompaniment to a fine meal. But do you know why that is? Do you know why people say, "Oh, you must have a good bottle of wine with a fine meal." It's because the restaurants would go bankrupt if they didn't sell alcohol. They have to sell alcohol. Otherwise, probably like 80% of the restaurants in the world would go under without alcohol sales. Have you seen how much it costs for a bottle of wine in a, in a restaurant? You're talking five to 10 times the price you can buy it for in the supermarket. So it's in the interests of not only the alcohol manufacturers, but also the, uh, the leisure industry to propagate this story that you cannot have a good meal without a good bottle of wine. The truth shall set you free, Brad. It is about learning. It's about re-educating yourself. Because you've, you know, this is not a belief you've had your whole life. You know, it's not like when you were a kid, you couldn't have a good time because, you know, oh, damn it, we would have a good time if there's some red wine around. You knew back then how to have a good time without alcohol. In fact, if I'd given you alcohol back then, it would have ruined your day. It would have ruined your parents' day as well. You would have been vomiting everywhere. It's this you have learned in your adult life to romanticize a poison. What you are suffering from is Stockholm Syndrome. You've fallen in love with your abuser. And I need to slap you about the face until you realize that. You love the person who abuses you the evil clown. Time to stop that. Um, Nickelodeon, a sort of midlife crisis triggered my problem drinking. I know what you mean. I've had about seven of those. Um, Eric the Red, introvert here. Speak the truth, Craig. Those introverts got to stick together, but only for short periods of time. <laughs> Philip says, strength in numbers. I'm with you. I agree with you. Um, Will Collins, Will, five years without a drink, you superstar. Share your secret, Will. Tell us, uh, tell us how you stay on the straight and narrow. Charles, uh, greetings. Uh, almost one year sober, spent 21 days in rehab that was heavily AA-based. Never worked for me, but took your book with me. If anything, rehab gave me a chance to actually read it. Yeah. That's, that's, my, that's the problem with rehab, isn't it? Because... You know, you don't go straight to rehab, do you? It's not like that's your first port of call. Generally, you've tried many other things and you've probably been to AA and it didn't work for you. Hence, now you're looking at rehab. But when you get to rehab, you find out that they're using the 12 steps, which is basically AA with medicine. And if it didn't work for you in the first place, why would it work for you again at $50,000? Now you've just found a really expensive way not to stop drinking. Uh, Ron's in the house. 
researching how to quit, I found a video saying doctors in America are now being taught to say that wine is no good at all for the heart until their patients have stopped using alcohol. Wow. Yeah. But you, that's always been the case, you know. I mean, at no point in history has alcohol, any, any amount of alcohol, being good for the heart. That has been bullshit from the start. But doctors used to say drink in moderation, not stop, because they felt hypocritical because they were drinking themselves. And how could they sit there telling someone to stop drinking when they're planning to go home and have a bottle of wine? You would not believe the amount of one-to-one -one private coaching I do with doctors, surgeons, professional medical staff. It's a scary number. Um, Damien. I found nothing negative about stopping. Saved a ton of money. Sleep like a baby. No panic attacks. Loads of other stuff. Three years sober. Legend. Um, best wishes to you all from Think Void. Great to be part of the chat. Stay strong. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. I think, oh, we've done 50 minutes. So I think we'll wrap up so I don't bore you to bits. Uh, just a reminder, we've got some great stuff coming up uh, in the next week 10 days uh, some really really high quality guests uh, we have mark our stop smoking expert on monday he really knows his stuff uh, so if you have any questions at all about quitting smoking and the connection between alcohol and cigarettes he's your man he's going to help you out big time we have sharon hartley on the show friday i'm hoping next week uh sharon absolutely it became that sort of mom of a couple of kids who would come home from work, open the bottle of wine, and it became a nightly routine. She was drinking every night. Um, she's now over 1,000 days alcohol-free, and she dedicates her time to this podcast, which is Over the Influence, if you want to go and have a look at it. Uh, she's great value. Uh, we'll have a chat with her next week. And also, maybe next week or the week after, we're going to have Andrew Bridgewater on, who is an expert in depression and anxiety. He's also an expert in how your choice of food affects your mood. Uh, he's got some great tips for uh, having a peace of mind, having great sleep and things like that. So we'll have him on as well. So that'll be fantastic. Great guests coming up in the next week to 10 days. Uh, just a reminder, the Telegram group is open. If you want to find some sober friends, you can go there now. And if you are new to the channel, if this is your first time, the First thing you should be doing before you leave, clicking that subscribe button, ringing the bell, and liking the video. So I will say goodbye. Have an amazing sober weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. We'll be here with Mark, the Stop Smoking expert, uh, and he will talk you through that. Thanks for watching. See you later. Imagine waking up tomorrow. No hangover. No feelings of guilt or regret. Just full of energy and vitality. That goal is not only possible, it's easily achievable. Find out how 200,000 people just like you have rediscovered their happy, sober lives using the Stop Drinking Expert program. Reserve your place on today's free Quit Drinking webinar and get a copy of my best-selling book, Alcohol Lied to Me, as a free gift just for turning up.